Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt. Andrew McCart, IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Delighted to be once again joined by the WBO champion, Michaela Maya. Michaela, I want to talk about everything. First of all, Happy New Year. How's things? Still. Yeah. Everything's well, doing ready for the call. Yep, definitely. But I want to talk about, obviously, your plans, your hopes and dreams of becoming unified champion in 2021. But like I spoke to you a little bit before I pushed record, I want to talk about Saturday night and the Twitter storm that you created. Um, you basically, you're a passionate American, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and you basically said some that British fighters come with a sort of style and America always wins and stuff like that. Do you have something against British fighters? No. Okay. So <laughs> let that, that tweet, I mean, you would think I threatened to kill someone. That's how much uh, criticism I got from that tweet. Uh, so let me just, let me just explain a little bit. First of all, obviously not every European fighter doesn't know how to use their jab. I mean, there's an, or uses their jab the way I was explaining. A lot of them do use their jab really well. Um, Tyson Fury is one of them. I think he's a great heavyweight because of how well he uses his jab. But let me just go into a little bit of the explanation of my thought process here. For one, I've trained both styles, okay? I have a very old school American coach, Al Mitchell. Coach K follows right behind him in that style. And I've also trained under Billy Walsh for four years, who was I, hired. I, I Irish, yeah, yeah. Yeah, who was hired by Team USA for our coach when I was on the Olympic team. Um, I've done camps in Europe. I've fought European fighters. And so I will stand by the fact that the European style, there is a difference with the American style versus the European style. And I know because I've trained with both, both coaches and I've competed against European fighters. Now, everyone has their opinion of what they think works and what they think doesn't work. For me, I, after training both styles and learning the difference, like I enjoy the American jab a whole lot better, especially in the pros. Mm -hmm. And this whole idea came about because I was watching um, the Garcia Campbell. Campbell, yeah, Campbell fight. And I noticed in the warm up when Campbell was warming up, he was doing a lot of the things that I used to train under Billy Walsh, like certain moves. Um, fainting with the jab, um, using a lot of fakes, using that front hand more as a pawn in a in a kind of kind of bait your opponent in, and it's a very common European thing to do. Anyone who's competed in the amateurs for an extensive amount of time like knows that there's a difference, and it's very common. And so when I saw him doing that, that's what sort of got me going in a sense where, in a pro fight like this, that jab, that that style with that front hand doesn't win. And I said that I said if. If Ryan Garcia doesn't get caught up in the hippity hoppiness and the feints, then America wins against this style. And I still, I still stand by that tweet. Now, now we can even, we can even look at that fight. And sometimes it works. Sometimes that pawny with the front hand and pawny with the jab works. And it worked. That's how he rocked. He, that's how uh, Campbell knocked down Ryan Garcia, right? But if you notice, he fainted the jab to the stomach. He really didn't. He didn't really step in with that jab to the stomach. And then he came over the top with the right hand. In that case, it definitely worked. But overall, if I were training that that punch or that combo with Coach Al or Coach K, it would be a stiff, hard jab to the stomach. The Americans would do a stiff, hard jab to the stomach. It's less fainting. Um, it was, it's a different kind of jab. I mean, and, and you can like it or you can not like it. You can disagree with me. I don't care. It's a different kind of jab. We definitely chain the jab a different way. And I can... I can say that because I've done both ways mm -hmm. and I like the American way better. I, I can see where you're coming from because Luke Campbell spent a lot of time in the GB squad and the podium squad that we have here in Sheffield in the UK where they sort of, you, you can see that sort of amateur sort of background with amateur is the fainting with the jab and stuff like that. But the Eastern Europeans, they're, they're different. They like to step in with a jab and turn their head away. They're like, their jabs are, are, are strong. So when I was look, watching through the tweets, I was like, oh, I'm going to love this. I was going back to the replies and looking at it. Like I see like, so the he says hi, <laughs> Glocken says hi. But uh, you took on the chin. You did well. I'll give you that. You did very well. 
those the Eastern Europeans that got on me. Yeah, I bet they did. I bet they did. But you, okay. again, going back to Twitter, um, Terry Harper, and you, you, you shared a couple of tweets. Now, I spoke to you for the first time, I believe, nine months ago, ten months ago, during lockdown, when we were all locked down, when the COVID hit the first time, and you said that that's the fight you want. Now you're a world champion. Do you have a bigger bargaining tool to make that Terry Harper fight happen now? Yeah, I mean, for you, you know, you, we've done interviews. Uh, the longest time it was, oh, who's Michaela Mayer? Go get a belt, go get a belt, regardless of me being a number one contender. So um, I only got a belt because I was finally made mandatory. Like, no one was going to give me that fight, obviously. And so uh, I have the belt now, and now I'm ready to to take on these fights like I've been wanting. But, you know, Terry had to go and break her hand in the last fight, so now we got to give her time to heal. Um I really feel like it's me versus Eddie Hearn right now because he's got the girls in my division. Apparently, he's already contracted high on me Choi to fight Terry Harper when she's done healing. So, I mean, you know, I, I think this is silly. I'm ready to fight now. I'll fight anyone. I already told uh, Eddie Hearn via Twitter that I'll, I'll fight Mava Hamadouche also. So I know my team is on it. I expect a call from my manager this week to sort of give me an update on that. But uh, I stand by my word about me wanting to go undisputed, and I have three girls on my hit list right now. So, no I'm just, three girls are with Eddie Hearn, is that right? You know, Eddie Hearn, and which I'm totally cool with because, like I said, now I know where to find them. It's it's it, we go through one person, Eddie. So we have that contact, and hopefully we can make these fights happen this year. Um, you know, I, I might come across uh, to the UK fans right now as like this bitchy American, but. Um, I'm just trying to bring hype to this division. It's the most exciting division in women's boxing right now. Um, and I'm ready to, uh, you know, help, help elevate women's boxing with this division and these four girls. I want to unify and I know I'm the best and I'm ready to just show the world that. If there's anyone that can get you the fight with these girls, Eddie Hearn, it's Bob Arum. You're with the right promoter as well. Oh, he, and you know, I, I don't really have experience with, with that because I've only been pro for a couple of years and I am their, their only female right now. But when he slid in and got me mandatory the day that Eddie announced signing, uh, um, what's her name? Eva, Eva Rod Ronica, Ronica. Yeah. The girl I just fought yeah. <laughs> when that announced the day that Eddie signed her, that's when I knew like Bob knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And so I know he's working for me. I know he's going to, he's going to try and make these fights happen. I know he believes in me and he wants them to happen. So I'm just going to let him do his job. Talk to me about the world champions. And like, and, and it's clear that you want Terry Harper. I mean, there's a little bit of beef there. The fans have got, are interested in it, but is that the fight that if you could, if you could put a promoter's hat on your head, is that the fight that you want next? Yeah, that's the fight I really want next. Now, Eddie Hearn is not talking about that fight. He's talking about giving me Maeva Hamadou. She's trying to cut me out of the equation because, like, from the beginning, he's been wanting to build uh, build up Terry Harper, and she, he wants her to go undisputed, right? That was the first girl he signed in this weight division. So um, he's trying to stick to that plan. He wants to wean me out of, the, out of the equation, which I don't blame him because I feel like he knows I'm a threat. And But I also believe that me and Terry Harper is the fight. And not just for like this division, but for women's boxing. I think we're going to do uh, great numbers on this fight, but um, I don't know if that's going to happen as soon as I'd like. And also it's going to happen because of me. Like there's, I don't care what they say. They're talking about her being the A side in this division. Like she hasn't said a peep to me. She hasn't said a word. She hasn't responded to any tweets. Her coach is over there tweeting for her. I know that's her coach. I know that's not Terry. Terry's quiet. She's to herself. She hasn't made really any noise in this division. I'm the one making the noise. And so, yeah, I do believe I'm the A side. And when I go and fight her, I am the A side. Everyone can want to watch the fight just to see me lose, but they're watching the fight because of that. And that being said, then, I think you want the fight in, in, in the U.S. Now, with everything that's going on, with the UK being in lockdown and who knows how long it's going to be on for, we've not really had fans back in our arenas. Now, like I said to you again before I pushed record, was I was in Texas for Canel Cam Smith. Now, there was 12,000 fans and a 60,000 seat, and the atmosphere was unreal, even with just 12,000 fans. So the fight looks like it might possibly be made in the States because that's where the fans are, are right now, in Texas especially. Is that where you would like it? Because you're in Texas right now, I believe. Of course. And if 
that that may give us some pull right now because of the pandemic and the situations going on and the fact that there are certain states here in America that are allowing uh, fans to attend and um, so that may play a part in us getting getting the fight on our turf but also I believe it should be on our turf anyways like I'm fighting on ESPN that's going to be bring the most attention to women's boxing um, is having this fight on ESPN in America and I, I stand by that I mean I know that uh, boxing is really big in the UK and you always have a lot of, or in, in, in Europe in general and you always have a lot of great supporters and um, it's a big sport there but if we want to really build women's boxing we got to we got to make America pay attention we got to be on ESPN that, that's what everyone says you've got to crack America but for young fighters in the UK coming through there was always that consensus that if you really want to make it big in boxing you've got to go and crack America we had Prince Nassim go over there we had Lennox Lewis go over there we had Ricky Hatton go over there. We've had Amir Khan. We've had Anthony Joshua go over there for his first fight against Ruiz. Unfortunately, he lost. So the general consensus for UK fighters is to go over to America and crack it. They'll try and it's crack it. Any entertainment. Like, mm. America is the challenge. Beatles and the Rolling Stones, they had to crack America. You're right. It's, it's the musicians yeah. and actors and stuff like that. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I, I think... I think Terry would take the fight in America. You know, she's, she, she's up for a fight. And I, I, as a fan, I would like to see it because... You're making a lot of noise on Twitter. I know Terry quite well. She's she's a lovely girl and she she's a good fighter as well. You're a good fighter. So for me personally, as a selfish fan right now, that's the fight I want to see. But what do you have yeah, to do? Do you have to keep making noise on Twitter and keep calling her out? I guess so. Honestly, <laughs> I do think Terry's game. I do think she's game, but I also think that she's very young and she's just and she's still not that experienced. And so she doesn't really have a say. Like I feel like I'm at a part in, a point in my career where I have a little bit more say. Like I can call up my manager, I can call up my promoter, I can say make this fight happen. And they believe in me and they trust in me and 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 they'll they'll push to make it happen. Terry's just sort of doing what she's told to do. And she like I said, she hasn't responded to a single tweet. She hasn't really helped build up this fight. It's all me going out on Twitter. Yeah, her coach is responding, but the only time I've heard her respond to me calling her out is when after her fight, all the reporters who are giving her a post by interview are asking about what about Michaela O'Meara? What about Michaela O'Meara? And that's because I have been pushing it. I have been bringing attention to this fight. So uh, I'm going to continue to do that until it happens. And it's going to be great for women's boxing. Uh, it's going to be great for both of our careers. And uh, Eddie Hearn's going to be a little pissed off when I when I take the belt and ruin his plans, but you know, I think ultimately it's a win-win for, for the sport. Yeah, but there's, a, there's a girl as well who's not a world champion, but she got that draw against Terry Harper and, and Tasha Jonas. Now, I, again, I like, I, I, I like it when American fighters come over to the UK to try and obviously build themselves. I've seen like fighters like Amo Williams and Ray Ford and all the young fighters coming through. Now, for you, you, you're going to be a fan favourite, whether they beat that Floyd Mayer, they want to see you beat and you'll get booed in the ring. But I want to see the sort of... Because we are, we are true boxing fans over here. I want to see the sort of reception you'll get. Because I know some UK fans like the way you talk on Twitter. So you do have some support over here. I have a lot of UK fans, I'm not going to lie. I really do. And uh, But I also have a lot of, like you said, a lot of UK haters who are going to come watch that fight just to hopefully get my ass beat. <laughs> well, that, that, again, that's what that's what the, that's what we're in the sport for, man. You but you want you support somebody, you want to see them get beat. Uh, so the plans for twenty twenty one, then obviously with the pandemic and everything like this, what's your hopes? Are you hoping to be unified or undisputed by this year? What what's what's your dreams and hopes for twenty twenty one? Yeah, I think that is one of the greatest things right now about this new era of women's boxing. Like we we want to unify. We want we want to unify this division. Um, we want we want a champion. We want to fight. And, uh, you know, I think that Maeve Hamadouche and I think that Terry Harper want that too. Hi, I'm Choi. I don't even, I just, I just think she's just there because she's there and she hasn't really been, uh, you know, it's been sitting on this title for years and no, no one really pressing her and wanting to fight, but, um, she's the first one to go out of this equation. <laughs> Let me just say that. But I think the rest of the girls, they want to unify and they want to be unified undisputed champion so i think that as long as we can get our promoters to work together and get these fights done the money's right no lowballing okay we all we're the, the toughest division in women's boxing right now we all deserve to get paid properly and the circumstances need to be right and as long as our promoters can come to that agreement then i think that all of us all of us champions in this division are ready to fight whenever they tell us to
I mentioned her, but she doesn't have a belt. But Tasha Jonas is obviously she doesn't have a belt, but she's a good fighter. She's she shot. I think I feel like she des- deserves a shot at a world title. Now, would you would you would you entertain that fight if that came about? Obviously, she's not in your plans in terms of a title, but she she she's a good fighter. Uh, she's in your division. She's a good fighter. Unfortunately, she didn't do enough to win the fight against Terry Harper. So she's not on my radar right now. People keep asking about her. Yeah, she's a good fighter, but I'm still not going to push for a fight against Jonas over Harper. Like, it's just not going to happen. There's no benefit there for me. I want the belts. I want to go into dispute. And then, yeah, hey, maybe give her, maybe give uh, Jonas a shot at it. She had a close decision with Terry, but she didn't do enough to win. So, yeah, she's, there's a lot of great fighters in this division. And it's like, it's getting to the point where, if you slip up and you don't capitalize on your opportunity, you might not get another one. You know, that's how, that's the level we're at right now with this division and women's boxing. So I, I don't know. She's not on my radar right now, maybe in the future, but as of now, I got three other girls that I'm, I'm ready to take the belt from. Definitely. Um, you're obviously training, you're training away. Have you got any news on a fight date or when you, you're likely going to be out again? We're looking at March. We're looking at March, but then again, like, it's just really up to the conversation that top rank and match room um will be having in the next few weeks uh, i get a call from my manager this week to kind of give me an update on all that i haven't heard anything i don't really get to i don't really hear the back and forth my manager calls me when he has a firm answer so i'm sure they're doing doing their thing and just waiting for the call and staying ready that's that's the best way to be now i know eddie Hearn watches ifl tv right eddie Hearn loves ifl tv so have you got a message for eddie Hearn? Hey, I like Eddie Hearn. My beef is not with Eddie Hearn. My beef is not with Eddie Hearn. I want to I, I wanna do big things in women's boxing. I want to make money. I want to have fun. Um, if anything, I'm, I'm just trying to build these fights up and, you know, bring these belts back to America. So I guess we have a little beef, but at the end of the day, we all got to work together. So exactly. hard feelings against Eddie. I hope... I'm sure, I don't know how he feels about me, but well, I'm sure he loves you, man. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie's, Eddie doesn't hate anyone. Eddie, Eddie's not got a bad bone in his body. I mean, he winds people up, like he'll wind you up, similar to what you do on Twitter. You like to wind people up. That's that's Eddie. Eddie would love that. But the, what the sort of Twitter yeah, back. I, I hope he's enjoying it a little bit because at the end of the day, um, you know, it's matchroom versus top rank. Like we're the ones who who are going to help uh, bring this division to the forefront. So we all got to work together a little bit. Definitely, I totally agree. And Michaela, I won't keep you much longer. I know you've got a more important interview after me with ESPN, the big dogs, so I won't keep you much longer. Um, but again, thank you for doing this for IFL TV. I really appreciate your time. Um, and I'm looking forward to your next fight in March. Hopefully, by the summertime, we'll see you in a unification fight. But until then, yeah. stay safe, stay training, and I'll speak to you soon, Michaela. Thank you. For sure. Thank you. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free, impartial advice on all your debt.